This is a 13-inch MacBook Pro from 2011, and despite being almost 15 years old, it's still a beautiful and functional machine. Unfortunately, Apple has left this computer long behind with software updates. So today, we're gonna bring it back to life with Ubuntu Linux. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy saving old, neglected computers from the horrors of e-waste, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. We're fresh on the heels of a brand new Ubuntu. 2510 Questing Quaka. What's a Quaka? And it offers some great improvements for modern hardware. Things like support for Core Ultra XE3 integrated ARC graphics and Battlemage discrete GPUs, a cutting edge new terminal, but I'm not concerned with how it performs on modern high-end hardware, because my basement is basically the island of misfit toys for old computers. So how does the latest Ubuntu perform on something like this? A mid-spec early 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro. Apple abandoned this poor thing way back with macOS 10.13, which hasn't had a security update since 2020. Of course, you can hack the latest version of macOS on here with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, but that's an unsupported configuration, which is a shame because this thing is good. It has a dual-core i7-2620M CPU running at 2.7 GHz. It supports up to 16 gigs of RAM. The original 500 GB spinning hard drive is easily replaced with an SSD, which we're going to do today. It has Airport Extreme, Bluetooth 2.1, and a whole bunch of wonderful ports. And you know, you can find old Macs like this for free all day long. People are just chucking them in the trash. I found this one in the free pile at a VCF swap meet. And I think these are even better today than they were when they were brand new. Because this is a heck of a lot of computer for zero dollars. All right, let's install Ubuntu on this thing. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Delete me. Today's internet is a weird place. Everything you do and say online is analyzed, cataloged, chopped up, and sold on the open market of data brokers. And it's not just shady advertisers buying this data. Your private info can wind up in the hands of scammers, fraudsters, phishing schemes, and worse. Oh look, another political text. This is exactly the kind of thing that Delete Me can help to address. I've been using Delete Me for well over a year now and they help me control my personal information in ways I was never able to accomplish manually. They constantly scour the internet for my info and report back to me exactly which data brokers and websites have it. And then, well, they delete me. And there's a privacy advisor that I can reach out to at any time. Just look at my listings removed over time. A big spike at the beginning where they removed the huge amount of data that was just floating out there on me and then a consistent removal of all the data that keeps popping back up. Get 20% off Delete Me consumer plans when you go to joindeleteme.com slash actionretro and use promo code actionretro at checkout. That's joindeleteme.com slash actionretro, code actionretro. I think these unibody MacBook Pros are some of the best products that Apple ever made. I mean, they're beautiful, they're durable, they're solid. And they're very modern. I mean, back in the day, they were far ahead of their time, and now they still hold up. This one's in great condition. The wonderful keyboard is almost as good as new. Trackpad feels nice. Haptic feedback works well. Screen is absolutely gorgeous and bright, clear, no dead pixels. This thing's battery even holds a charge. Back in 2011, the speakers on this thing were better than anything else on the market, and they still sound great today. Just look at these glorious ports. We have Ethernet, Firewire, Thunderbolt, two USB 2.0 ports, a full-size SD card slot, headphone jack. In Australia, that means better than an iPhone. And look, we even have a nice little battery meter. On the other side, we have quite the rarity today, an optical drive, a DVD RW in this case. In fact, the only actual defects on this machine are on the top here. I don't know what happened above the Apple logo. Someone tried to take a bite out of it. And we have a couple of scuffs and scrapes and a few dents. 
But these things are durable, made out of metal, aluminium. Man, even this hinge is perfect. Can still open it with one hand just fine. Apple really knew what they were doing in the 2010s. Okay, let's pop the bottom off of this thing and see what kind of hard drive we have. Well, would you look at that? I've already been in here. There is a Lexar SSD. Did I even secure this thing in here? No. <laughs> but that goes to show you just how easy it is to get to the SSD in this thing. Normally there's supposed to be a little bracket here that's screwed in, but I must have lost that. Anyway, 256 gigs, plenty of space for a nice install of Ubuntu. Uh, right here is the USB installer that we just made. We will hold the option key and power this thing on. Keep holding down option until it gets to a fun boot menu. Here we go. And now we can plug in the USB. Shows up right there. And we are booting Ubuntu. Try or install Ubuntu. Oh yeah, there it goes. This of course has USB 2.0, so it does take a little while to get to a desktop. But here we are. Ooh, sound works. Wi-Fi does not work, but we can get that working very easily. For now, we'll just plug this into wired ethernet. All right, go through the installer. Have I mentioned how beautiful this screen is? Yeah, use wired connection, install Ubuntu, interactive. The Ubuntu installer is so easy these days. All right, install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. Hopefully that gets our Wi-Fi working. Yeah, erase the whole disk. Goodbye, unsupported Mac OS. A strong and secure password. Definitely not just the word action, all in lowercase. That would be insecure. All right, and install. Hopefully jump cut to install complete. That literally took like 10 minutes. Pretty crazy. Remove our install media. And just like that, we're booting into our brand new Ubuntu install. All right, my strong and secure password. Look at that. Ooh, it's very smooth. Look at that. I'll update that in a second. Do we have Wi Fi? We do not. That's okay. There is a solution. Ooh. This new terminal looks pretty fantastic. Man, this is so smooth. Can you believe this laptop is like 14 years old? We'll do a quick sudo apt update, sudo apt upgrade. So now all we have to do is just install a firmware for the Wi-Fi chip, firmware B43 installer, just like that. We'll do a quick reboot. Do we have Wi-Fi? We do! Just like that. And Wi-Fi compatibility is the big gotcha that people always say when they're talking about installing Linux on an old Mac. But most of the Macs I've ever installed Linux on, Wi-Fi just works, and in the few cases where it doesn't, that was easy enough. If you're trying to do this yourself, I will have a link down in the description with some more details so it's nice and easy. Suffice to say, we no longer need this. All right, so we've got Ubuntu installed and it runs pretty great, but just how useful can this possibly be on this ancient MacBook Pro? Well, let's do some stuff. I kind of feel like playing some games. Let's pop into the App Center. Why not Steam? Yeah, that's right. No command line nonsense needed here. Steam is right in the App Center. And guess what? Since we're running Ubuntu on this thing, it can actually do some things that it could never do under Mac OS. And just like that, we are in Steam. And now check this out. Since we're running Ubuntu Linux, we have easy access to Steam Proton, meaning we can play Windows games on here. That's right, no more Mac OS limitations. We can play pretty much any Windows game that will run on this hardware, in some cases better than it runs on Windows itself. Don't ask me why, that's purely anecdotal, but I swear it's true. Steam Proton, of course, being the technology behind the Steam Deck, which also runs Linux. Oh yeah, good old Half-Life 2. Lightweight modern games like Brotato work absolutely great on this thing. Look at that, that's a modern game. 
and probably the best game you've never heard of. I mean, that's as good as it runs on my Steam Deck. Awesome. Browsing the internet is a perfectly acceptable experience. Even something super heavy like modern YouTube runs great. HD video, not a problem at all. Did I mention this computer is like 15 years old? All your favorite apps like Spotify are right in the App Center. You've even got stuff like LibreOffice, a totally free and excellent office suite for getting work done. All the best and worst of modern computing on a computer that most people chuck into e-waste. And it's not just this one. Here's a 2010 MacBook Pro 17 inch. Again, I found this thing for free at the VCF Midwest free pile. Here's a machine I use all the time. It's an 11 inch MacBook Air. Nobody wants these things. I got this for next to nothing. Running Ubuntu 2510, this is my primary travel computer. In fact, I just took this on a trip out to Texas. I managed my channel from this. I did some coding work on Frog Find on this. I love this thing so much. I actually replaced the battery in this thing in a previous video. It lasts forever. It's absolutely tiny. Ubuntu on old Intel Macs is just freaking incredible. If you ever see me at a convention, I'm probably using this thing. The best travel computer I've ever had. So do you have any old Macs laying around that you could try Ubuntu 2510 on? If so, let me know in the comments down below. I'm really interested to hear how you make out. In any event, thank you very much for watching. And I just want to give a very special thank you to all of my Patreon supporters and channel members. Thank you so much, each and every one of you for supporting me and supporting this channel and all the weird stuff I do. I am so very grateful and I just could not do this without you.